Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So, these girls out there in YouTube world, they do a lot of get ready with me videos. Putting on their makeup. <laughs> this is my get ready with me in the morning. Eating my breakfast. If you're ever in Anchorage, make sure you go buy Fire Island Bakery. Pretty good stuff. Alright, so... I didn't have these grandiose ideas of what I was going to do this morning. Uh, I was going to, so I've been sampling a whole bunch out there lately. And I had had a Grossmith sample that reminded me of several perfumes that I had had, or have. And I brought a bunch over, and then I realized I forgot the sample at home. So that's not going to work. So. I do have a standalone perfume that I think would be worthy of a discussion in and of itself. But since I'm going to be truncating the perfume talk today, I thought I could do a bag check of the day. Because I, I, I find this funny. Uh, so I usually, I'm at work, as you can probably tell from my background, and I usually have two. I usually have a little small little thing that I could put crossbody, and then I'll have a big, bigger tote to carry my laptops, laptop and iPad in. And so that was Coach Bandit. So, oh, why it's worthy of mention is, so as you all can see, I'm a large lady. I'm a taller lady, I'm foot nine. And most times crossbodies do not work on me because they are too short. Even the ones that most females out there complain about, or anybody complains because they're too short, um, or they're too long, even those I usually have problems with them being long enough for me. But I just wanted to show that this sucker is actually long enough, and I'm quite happy that I have this thing. I only have, I have a few crossbodies that I found that will fit, but most of them don't. So anyway, I wanted to make mention of that. I like that little bag. And then, so my tote of the day, so I, I, I think I've, not think, I know I've put a couple videos out there with rather expensive handbags. This is on the opposite side of that spectrum. This is, I don't know exact pricing, but it's sub $300. So somewhere between 250 and 300 is what I got it for. Uh, so yes, I do not discriminate. I love handbags, period, <laughs> regardless of how many it is. So <clears throat> this sucker is from a company called Urban Southern. First, I was gonna say I'm not sure where they're from. Maybe Texas with a name with Southern in it. But I just remember now that I first heard about this company from a YouTuber. He is so adorable, Chi Sim. Please look him up. I might even tag him when I put up the description in the box. I probably will. So I first heard about them through him, and. He, I think, is either in Pennsylvania or he went to a Pennsylvania store of these guys. So, Urban Southern is the name. Can you see? Here, let me grab. Uh, and I'm gonna say, I, even with all like the fancy bags I have, this is like one of my favorites. I've only had it for I don't know about a week now, but it's 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 quickly becoming a favorite. I seem to gravitate towards it every day. And I just wanted to mention like one what, what do I love so I, I, I appreciate the strap I think it's a great length there's another thing so it's pretty north south um, length or design to it which I must say it's giving the row they have that north south park tote I think is what they call it and I didn't realize it when I bought it but it's given that kind of vibe for sure and at a fraction of the cost, a fraction of a fraction of the cost, probably of what the row would charge. And, but the leather, I must say, I'm very happy with the leather quality. So this is, this is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's full grain, but I'm not sure. Not positive, but uh, I like the feel of it. So most bags that have some kind of coating to their leather, I think they all, to some degree use some kind of um, plastics. Couldn't tell you which kind, I'm no leather expert, that's for sure. But this almost gives feel of, of like, 
actual wax. Again, I don't know what they use, but it's really a good, good feel. Like I, I really like this leather. Like I, I think I might have to get another something of theirs in this leather because it's, it's, it's really good. And so what I like is there's no edge coating to it. I'm, it seems like that's always a possibility of it uh, cracking and whatnot. And I like the feel of, of edge or like raw edges. But so in comparison, so everybody out in YouTube land, well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of the people I watch were really into Portland leather goods and their quality, they have full grain leather. They're also raw edge, simple, you know, simple tote kind of things. It's not a lot of, uh, uh, stitching is required. You know, it's just, you know, you slap pieces together and, but it's, it's still cool, but sorry. So I mentioned them and this company for that matter uh, with the raw edges and somehow <clears throat> Portland leather, which I have several because <laughs> I was interested in what everybody's raving about and I do like their leathers, but uh, their raw edge feels very raw to me, right? It feels, mm, it feels uh, raw. <laughs> this, even though it's raw, it has an elegance to it somehow in their cut. And, uh, the other thing that I can remark on, so at first when I got this, I was like, ooh, this, these handles are a little bit flimsy. Probably not the greatest in the world. And, uh, but I realized the advantage of that is, so when I put this right under my shoulder, if it was any more structured, it would probably would dig into my uh, armpit area, and it doesn't. It's really soft and malleable, so it's like a dream to, to wear, and it doesn't slip off, and yada, yada, yada. So there you go, there's my first. Well, maybe not my first, but it's a handbag review. I really, I really like this company. Urban Southern is them. All right, so let's get to the Kirkland talk, which is really what I'm about. Uh, so this Delta of Venus by Eris. Uh, I must say, I'm having a hard time processing this thing. So I'm yet another blind buy. I, no judgment on myself, <laughs> but I do. Not always, but usually. Uh, I was I was halfway shocked that I actually chose to jump in full full feet, or maybe jump in full full hands. <laughs> the uh, because it 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 lists it very much as a guava forward fragrance, guava dominant fragrance, which. While I can appreciate fruity perfumes out there, is it my favorite genre? No, not by any means. And, but it also had underlying supporting notes of jasmine sandback, Egyptian pilot leaf, vetiver, grapefruit, a couple other things. Can't remember exactly what. But uh, musk. It has a. I don't think it listed musk in the accord list or in the note list. But it definitely has some kind of musky feel to it. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so I had several of those other um, notes in it. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll see what it's about. I'll try. And when I first put this on, when I first, first put this on, it does not smell like a perfume. So other fruity perfumes out there, sure, you know, peach is a common one out there or whatever kind of, other kind of fruit note is listed. It's always like, sure, it's got a fruity essence, but its underlying base is perfume. <laughs> you know, you we know what that means. It's a perfume scent with a little bit of fruit. This smells like I'm putting on guava juice. <laughs> like straight guava juice uh, is what I get in the opening. And you might ask, why the hell would you want to smell like juice? I don't know. <laughs> I just do. I like it. It makes me happy. <laughs> And it's very, it, it's close to mango, which I've just described before, whereas I, 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 there's something, like, it, it reaches down to my baby when, to my babyhood when I, like, love mangoes, and that's apparently all I would eat. But, but, but it's guava. It's not mango. It's guava, for sure. Uh, and then, <clears throat> so that in itself is hard to digest. It doesn't smell like perfume at the top. And then it dries down. You know, it's got those other stuff that I listed. Jasmine. Egyptian violet leaf, uh, vetiver, musk, sandalwood, maybe sandalwood, uh, I don't remember that part of it, um, and it 
doesn't it doesn't mellow or it doesn't dry down to a perfume either. So there's no indolic jasmine in it. There's the the whatever musk is about it, it's a it's a it imparts some kind of like aura around me. But I wouldn't say like I'm reminded of um, functional perfumery. I wouldn't say, oh, you know, it's glass glaxolide or whatever kind of white musks are out there. For that matter, whenever you hear my musks, it's it, it, yes, the clean aspect, but you can also smell the perfumey things about it. And no, this one doesn't give it. Like what? <laughs> like it, this is like this is blowing my mind a bit. It, you know, it's got that Egyptian violet leaf. And I'm reminded of the fact that there is a dumb, there is Egyptian violet leaf in one of my favorite perfumes, the Jasmine Sarai Fayoum. And while I don't, like, that one blows me away because it has that clay accord. But there's something else. It also has a little bit of jasmine in it, too, for that matter. And... And so I'm thinking, well, maybe that's what's going on here, is I'm registering this violet leaf in a way that I don't realize is perfume. But then you also have the, <laughs> like, vetiver, like, so this is only my third time wearing it, and I don't know, many hours into it, I think I can almost identify a vetiver note, like, individually a vetiver note. But this whole composition, it's, um, I think, you know, it's 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 what people sort of say. Oh, this is like a body scent. And every time I hear people talk about oh, it's being a body scent, you know, my 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 eyebrow raises. Oh no, it's my nose. My nose. Well, no, it's my eyebrow. My eyebrow raises and like it still smells like perfume to me. This thing, it very much feels like a body scent. Like this doesn't smell like perfume. There's something about it though. Because. Yeah, a lot of that guava has burned off. It's been about an hour-ish, hour plus now that I've had it on. And and so, okay, so here's another comp, like I probably should have grabbed for a couple more bottles now that I think about it. Chronotope, I talked about them, I don't know, however many videos ago I, I, I wore it one, one day in, in when I was doing those weekly rotation videos. Chronotope Playa Linda. So that's also described as like a, like, the, the, the copy on it is about uh, a nude beach. And there's something about the grapefruit copper notes that gave it like that sulfuric kind of something, sulfuric musky something about it. And maybe that's what I'm registering my head with that grapefruit note in this sucker as being a body scent. I don't know. Because you think of grapefruit as being more top note-ish. But again, I, at the top, oh, straight guava juice. <laughs> like, that's it. So you would think that it would have burned off in that top section. So whatever that grapefruit underlying. So when I'm talking body scent, it's more at the, you know, the drawdown phase of this perfume. But I'm, I'm still, like, again, this is only my third time wearing it. I'm still in the process of trying to figure it out. Because it's like no other thing that I own out there. I am so happy that I got this sucker. It's so strange. It's a perfume that isn't a perfume. And I, you really should sample this sucker. It's blows my mind because that musky aura, it's not really hard. It's not like musky in any way. I don't know. It's just, it's just so good. It's, it, you need to go check it out. Um, yeah, get your nose on a sample. Or blind buy for them <laughs> if you're willing to, like I did. But Aries perfumes, I, I, I dig Barbara Herman's house. She's good stuff. Very good stuff. All right, I'm done. Bye.